Hey, what's going on guys? It's Jordan from Just Tesla and today I want to settle something that I saw online recently. It was on Twitter. There was a poll on what's better autopilot versus full self-driving. Um, it was involving the Tesla community and I saw a lot of people arguing this, but I just wanted to put it to bed and here, here's my video on it. Um, if you would, please smash that like button for me. I do appreciate it. So today I want to cover autopilot versus full self-driving in the UK. Um, there's been some huge discussions on Twitter and somewhat smug full self-drivers who, um, who talk about full self-driving. So I want to weigh in as an autopiloter, but I'm not here to give you some rubbish opinion. I want to weigh in with a decent comparison. I want to give you some decent comparisons. So this is how detailed I want to do this. I'm going to take the exact same journey. One is going to be in my Model 3 with a Hardware 3 standard included autopilot. That's the one you get free with your car. It has auto steer as it's listed in the car and also has auto cruise control, creating the quote unquote autopilot as it says in the car. And then we have the Model X with Hardware 2 full self-driving and this includes smart summon lane changes navigate on autopilot auto park and a few more features um, firstly i just want to highlight the obvious difference one of the cars has hardware three and one of the cars has hardware two but in my opinion um, as it currently stands in the uk this doesn't make too much difference uh, because of legislation full self-driving is limited and those limits in my opinion fall well within the limits of hardware two so the any advantage of hardware three doesn't really apply as it's still restricted by regulations. Okay, so we have the model three with the standard autopilot on the left and the model X with the full self driving system on the right hand side. So I'm going to keep this based in the UK. I am aware that there are different regulations that may lead to a better experience in the US and other places. But in the UK, we have to adhere to a lot of safety procedures. So most people know this, but you must keep your hands on the wheel at all times. That goes for autopilot and full self-driving. There are workarounds to this, which I might talk about in another video, but the questions on safety and legality of these workarounds is worth thinking about in my opinion. So for me, as a person who likes to drive, this is where full self-driving loses a huge point for me. So this is the first one. If you have to keep your hands on the wheel for both systems, so for the autopilot and the full self-driving, it puts them on a fairly close playing field to me. If you didn't have to place your hands on the wheel for the full self-driving, but you did for auto, I could see the advantages of full self-driving. And all of this is down to regulations. It's not the software itself, it's down to regulations. You have to keep your hands on the wheel for safety. So just talking about hands on the wheel, you can have your hand resting lightly on the wheel and intermittently as long as you are in control of the vehicle. And that's the most important thing, you must be in control of the vehicle like this driver is. It's all about safety. It puts them on kind of a level playing field in my opinion. So let's just move straight on to lane changing. So this is one of the features that full self-driving has, but autopilot does not have. So if you want to lane change in the standard autopilot, you need to take over the wheel. And once you've maneuvered, you can then move the car back into autopilot by using the stalk. Um, if you don't use a turn signal um, and you depart the lane, you'll get a little warning sign with the standard autopilot, which is a cool, nice little safety feature that they have. So let's talk about the full self-driving. So again, you must keep your hands on the wheel, but if you want to change the lane whilst remaining in autopilot, you simply just use a turn signal and click it in the direction that you want to go. And the car will then decide when it's safe to pull out and perform the action. For me, there are two things about this that make it an absolutely pointless feature. And that's just my opinion. One, the system is very timid. It's good, it's good for safety, but by the time you do pull out, you, may have, you might have wasted like a minute or so. And this did happen to me on quite a few occasions. And also it can be quite indecisive. So for me, this killed the feature completely. There was one occasion where it started pulling out when it was safe, it was definitely safe to pull out. And halfway through it quite violently pulled back into the lane. And after this incident, I just stopped using it 
So you can see on the Model X, just a tick of the indicator and it pulls back into the lane. And this is when it works quite well. My biggest, and again, people may disagree with me, but I think it's an absolutely solid point. Changing lane normally on a, on a motorway or an A road requires the smallest amount of effort. It's just the slightest touch of the wheel with your hands and you can turn a lane on a highway. And that makes it pointless because you have to keep your hands on the wheel. So it's pointless. If you have to have your hands on the wheel, what is the difference between moving it a tiny little bit? Changing lanes just isn't hard. And that is why, for me, the lane change feature is pointless. Mentally using the full self-driving actually required more mental effort because I was having to trust the system. Um, now, you might get used to it, but that's just the way it was for me. You already have your hands on the wheel. You have to keep your hands on the wheel for regulations. So to me, at this point, it's a full-on gimmick. And again, this would be very different if regulations allowed no hands. But again, from my experiences for lane changes, it wouldn't do anything for me. Unless you have the full package and the system does it all itself, then what is the point? Uh, again, I'd love to know what you think of that. Who, who, who here uses the lane change feature and who benefits from, like, do you benefit from it that much? Do you think it would just be kind of simple to grab the wheel and move out of the lane? So again, try and put the left-hand signal on. It starts to turn, doesn't want to activate. I have to press it again and it slowly moves over. And by the time all that's been done, I could have turned into the left-hand lane myself. So you see what I mean about just, it's not that it doesn't require that much effort to do what the system does. So again, you have to put the, you'd have to put the car back into the lane you wanted to go in as well. So you'd have to go through the whole situation again to turn back into the same lane once you've overtaken the vehicle. So here's the Model X again on the right. So I turn to turn right, doesn't activate press it again looks like it's starting to engage and it pulls itself back into the lane now this is the incident I'm talking about this is what made me nervous to use it um, it could have been because my hands weren't on the wheel but at the same time it just doesn't install confidence in me okay so now I want to talk about a big feature that's kind of hyped up on the full self-driving and that's navigate on autopilot Again, with your standard autopilot, you will not have this included and you will need the full self-driving package to use it. So what does it do? Or what is it supposed to do, should I say? So navigate on autopilot is basically supposed to do 95% of your driving. So long as your hands are on the wheel, it will get you in the correct lane. It will pull you out of lanes. So it, it will do um, lane changes if someone's going slow in front of you, but it's just a suggestion from the car. You still have to use the indicator to confirm you are happy to lane change. And um, you still obviously have to keep your hands on the wheel. The only thing I was impressed with actually, with the Navigate on Autopilot is when it took an exit for me. So it just felt like it was kind of doing it all by itself. It wasn't, it, that felt impressive to me um, and separated it from the Autopilot system. So it slowed down, it pulled off the exit and then it slowed down towards the end of the junction and asked me to take back over again. And that felt like the car knew what it was doing. It was different from the autopilot system. But I just want to cl clarify again, your hands are on the wheel. So we're splitting hairs between the two systems. If autopilot gives you a journey, your standard autopilot gives you a journey of 90% of the driving it'll do for you. Full self-driving maybe gives you an extra three to 4%. It will do overtakes, but again, you have to confirm it. It will pull off the junction, but again, that's a very small percentage of a journey. Um, and it's really just not that much more. Lane changes, you know, you need the confirmation. It's maybe a couple extra percentage of your journey. Um, but the bulk of the journey is done on standard autopilot, which is the one that's included. So, is it worth it? Is it, is it, you know, I, I think the problem is, is that the standard autopilot is just that good. It really is that amazing. So, you know, the Model 3 on the left-hand side has been trucking along absolutely fine. Like I say, autopilot is fantastic. Um, it's had no problems whatsoever. And the Model X is doing a similar job. And it's, it, the thing is with the Model X and the full self-driving is I'm just not as confident in the system. And it's, it doesn't, it's not as comfortable in my opinion. So let's go on to summon. Summon is cool, but it's a party trick if you ask me. 
everyone loves the idea of it and so do I but there are so many horror stories about someone scuffing wheels and dings and stuff that you have to watch the car so you have to be attentive and watching the car and they suggest that you're attentive and watch the car so if you have to watch the car what is the point it'll be much quicker to go over to the car jump in the car and drive um, now for tight spots in ga and garages it's actually can be very useful uh, but for me, these situations are very, very far and few between. So again, it's just not a thing for me. But when this is working perfect, it will be amazing. The, the idea of having the car pick you up is amazing. And again, I think a lot of this can be down to regulations. It's not for me, that one isn't. So really, I, I just can't see the benefit. Now, there's a lot of newer updates around the corner, and with the Hardware 3, I'm getting to see a lot of the visualizations, the traffic lights, and the system is improving so quickly. Soon stopping at red lights will be a thing, but again, you have to be in control of the vehicle, you have to have your hands on the wheel, you have to be attentive. I just don't see that benefit being there yet. With so little effort, I can brake at a red light. At so little effort, I can overtake someone and let autopilot finish the journey off, the 90% of the journey. So with the hands on the wheel, I just don't see it. I don't see how it's, it's beneficial, but the system is up, upgrading constantly and I can see the system is most definitely capable. Um, now I'm back in my, my Model 3 with the autopilot on Hardware 3 and we've just had another recent up, update and there's new objects on there. The system's more confident it definitely is moving in the direction of it being able to do all of this itself. So in the US, I don't actually think the systems are that, that different. I don't think it's that much different. You still need your hands on the wheel at the moment. Um, and I know, I just, I basically, I just feel that people who claim full self-driving is amazing are either exaggerating or are forgetting the fact that the hands are on the wheel. Like, how little effort is it to turn the wheel? And I can't see it. If I'm honest, I don't see the argument for full self-driving as it stands. And that's important. As it stands, I don't see the argument for it. Um, because autopilot is that great. And on Twitter, I saw it was mentioned that... Um, someone said there was a poll about is full self-driving worth it and i think um it was i think it was autopilot versus full self-driving and i think the majority of people chose autopilot over full self-driving and whoever created the poll i can't remember who it was it was a tesla page was i i think he was a little bit hurt by this and he basically says yeah how many of you people who have voted for autopilot actually have um, have got full self-driving and I think the question is opposite, actually. How many of the people who voted for full self-driving have used autopilot? Because I think the problem is, is a lot of the guys who are using full self-driving right now don't realize how great autopilot is. And I think they are taking the majority of the system, which is autopilot, and saying, yeah, the full self-driving is unbelievable. But I think what they're actually saying is, is autopilot is unbelievable. And the features are cool, the other features are cool, but they don't realize how great the standard autopilot actually is. The standard autopilot is amazing. And I would like to know how many people who, have, who are using the full self-driving system have actually felt the Hardware 3 autopilot and how much difference there is. Yeah, there's some cool features, but in the majority of the driving, autopilot is unbelievable. Now I've experienced both. I've, I've used both for a good length of time. Um, I even used the original full self-driving on the Model S. And um, that is my point. My point is autopilot that is included with the Model 3 is just that good. It really is amazing. And yeah, that's my point, really. I think um, it's something to think about. What do you guys think? I mean, this is my opinion. What do you guys think? So the Model 3, again, is is going along fine at this point and the model x is as well and this is this where the system does well you know you you're not everyone's not going at 70 miles an hour we've got a little bit of slow traffic and both cars perform fantastically all what i said has 
a huge caveat, a huge caveat. If it wasn't for regulations, everything I have just said would be out the window. It would be a different conversation. I know after the newest update on my hardware three autopilot system, it's just learning so fast, very fast. It's already more confident, it's more decisive, it's slowing down for pedestrians. And I know, I know the Tesla, the hardware three computer is capable of actual full self-driving. The system is that good, it really is that good. But what is the point with your hands on the wheel? How much more of a benefit is it really? And in my opinion, it's nothing. It, it is, it's almost pointless. Um, and that's coming from a person who likes to drive. If I have to have my hands on the wheel and I have to pay extreme attention to make sure the vehicle's safe, full self-driving is pointless because autopilot, for the long journeys, autopilot does an amazing job and you have to be attentive for that. Full self-driving's not doing that much difference. And that's, just, again, it's just my opinion, but it's pointless. If you look at the screen, at both screens as they are, like, when a lot of the roads you're going to find yourself on are going to be like this. And it's this is where, like I say, 90% of the driving in, in the autopilot is covered. And it's the same with the full self-driving. You get a few extra percent points, and that's that. So as it stands, um, at, I think it's around £6,000, or it might be a little bit less, but around 6000 or whatever it is, it isn't worth it. it full self-driving isn't worth it. And that's got nothing against full self-driving. If full self-driving was the only thing that existed, then it would be worth it. But free autopilot does exist, so there's no need to do it right now. We sort of are over a barrel with it all because Tesla are saying they're going to increase the prices. So it's sort of enticing the consumer to pull the trigger on the purchase. And it, it makes you think, it makes me think about buying full self-driving because I know once regulations are relieved that the full self-driving is 100% worth it. The full self-driving is going to be amazing. But until regulations are there, what is the point? And Tesla's work around that is to increase the price. Um, and as the price increases, the more you're going to think about, well, you know, I might as well purchase it now for when regulations do um, relax and when regulations do allow me to sit back and enjoy the ride. Um, I am definitely confident that Tesla can deliver the product. In fact, I think they already have. But we need some sort of promise from our government we need some sort of time frame to go off to make a decision to purchase um, when we can use it, if ever. And that's the issue. It isn't the system. It isn't Tesla. Even though I talk of the flaws, they aren't really any flaws. It's, it's nearly all down to regulation. But I think anyone telling you that full self-driving as it is is a game changer is kind of exaggerating because the autopilot that you get free with the car, is that great? Have they tried both systems? Because autopilot is that good. The free standard autopilot really is that amazing. You can actually do 90% of your journey on it. So why pay the six, seven thousands, whatever it is, for an extra 4% of your journey? Um, that is just my opinion. It is my opinion. When you can take your hands off the wheel, and you can sit sit back and let the car do the whole journey, or or ninety five percent of the journey where you can actually just let go of the wheel. Full self driving is the thing for me. I can't wait for it. I'm going to be signing up straight away. It's and I have nothing against the system. That's what I just want to state. But autopilot, standard autopilot, is that good? It is really that good. That full self driving isn't worth it at the moment. So, you know, we've covered the same journey, one going out, one coming back, and both, both systems covered 90% of the journey. There's not much between them in terms of that, and I come back feeling super relaxed after using both systems. But anyway, guys, as always, that's just my opinion. I would love to know your points. Um, the guys who have got full self-driving and have used autopilot as well, what what do you do with the other features? Like, which other features become useful for you? 
because um, like I said, I, don't, I didn't see the lane change feature. I didn't see navigate on autopilot as that much of a benefit for me. It requires so little effort because your hands are already on the wheel. But I'd love to know your thoughts and your opinions. Which features do you use? Like, do you use the um, auto park and all those kinds of features? Because uh, in my last video, someone spoke about auto park as they used to use it on their Mercedes, I think. Is that a big feature for you? If, you, if you're city driving, maybe it is. Maybe you park up in, the, in parallel parking positions all the time. Again, it's not a feature I use. So, and also, I don't mind parallel parking. So, you know, I don't know. It's all my thoughts and my opinions. Tell me what you think, guys. I'd love to know. I'm really hoping soon we get some kind of notification from the government about autopilot because I cannot wait for the day that I can fall asleep and wake up at my destination. And I really do think that the system hardware three could actually be capable of doing that. And that is why I'm hanging on to the model three. That is why I'm excited for the robo taxi and all those kinds of things. And I'm gonna do a video on it all very soon. But yeah, thanks for watching guys. If you're interested in buying a car as amazing as this, use the link in the description. It gets you a thousand free supercharging miles. It gets me a thousand free supercharging miles and I appreciate the support. Thanks for watching guys. As always, you're the best.